So, hi everyone, so I've been gone for such a long time, I've just been finishing up my master's degree in mathematical physics, working on a project. The full title was Boundary Conditions and Edge Modes in Gauge Theories. So in this video I'm going to hopefully give you some of an idea of what the project was about. So first of all, the full title was Boundary Conditions and Edge Modes. I want to make it clear from the outset that edge modes are boundary conditions, they are the same thing. So I'm just going to shorten the title to Edge Modes. And so this project kind of focused on, well, gauge theories. I'll explain what gauge theories are in a moment. Or rather, explored gauge theories that have a non-trivial boundary. So usually we deal with theories that have either no boundary, or we just assume that we're far, away, far enough away from any boundary that might exist. So we don't feel any effects that the boundary is going to introduce. However, this is obviously a simplification. Real, real life does have boundaries. So this theory looks at what extra effects are introduced when we have to deal with a boundary in a gauge theory. Well, this project consisted of a number of parts. The first was formulating gauge theories mathematically. So hopefully I'm going to be able to give you a light and brief introduction to gauge theories. I'm not going to be able to formulate all of the mathematics as we're going to need some differential geometry that I haven't quite covered yet. I'm planning to do a full series on all of the differential geometry and physics that goes into this project eventually, but for now I'm just going to have to kind of speak vaguely. So most notably we're going to, we're going to need Lie groups and then using Lie groups to form principal bundles. So obviously I haven't covered these yet and I'm not going to be able to explain to you fully what they are, but just to give you a really kind of rough and brief idea. A Lie group is essentially a, the continuous generalization of a group. Usually we think of a group as just being a set of discrete elements that satisfy the group axioms, whereas a Lie group is a continuous, uh, so a set that can be parameterized by a continuous parameter. And this also means that it's able to be described as a smooth manifold, which then makes a lot of constructions in differential geometry really, really nice. And we can use all of the nice features of group theory and this all ties deeply into symmetry as we're going to see eventually. And then principal bundles, I'm not going to be able to explain really at all what they are without leaning heavily on the mathematics, so I'm just going to kind of leave them as abstract for now. So once we'd formulated gauge theories, the next step was moving on to consider edge modes. So initially we considered edge modes in the, the gauge theory context. Now, um, I haven't said, but usually we think of gauge theories as being kind of particle physics theories, say, the gauge theory of the standard model, for example. However, we can think of more general gauge theories, for example, general relativity, which isn't formulated as a gauge theory, but we can kind of make it look like a gauge theory if we use the so-called Einstein-Cartan formalism, which was what the kind of second kind of half of the project considered was actually not only looking at edge modes in gauge theories, but trying to introduce edge modes into the Einstein-Cartan formalism, which hasn't really been done yet. So I realise I've skipped over edge modes. I'm not going to... I'll explain what edge modes are in a second, and I just want to kind of give you the overview of the project. So once we'd learnt what gauge theories and edge modes were, we then tried to introduce them into the Einstein-Cartan formalism, so into general relativity. And then once we'd done this, well, first of all, we were trying to introduce edge modes because, well, they haven't been introduced into general relativity before. And also, there are some problems in the Einstein-Cartan formalism when you introduce a boundary. In the standard formalism for Einstein-Cartan gravity, if you introduce a boundary, the standard formalism is going to tell you that that boundary essentially is a singularity or that the geometry is degenerate on that boundary. So this is obviously a big problem for the standard theory, but we were able to successfully show that if you introduce edge modes into the theory, so essentially extra things on the boundary, they're able to 
compensate for this degeneracy that's implied in the standard formalism. So we introduced edge modes into the einstein cartan theory and we realised that this hopefully fixes the problem on the boundary and then so to verify whether or not this is the right thing to do, whether or not the edge modes are working, we wanted to verify the model and so we verified the model by essentially asking does the model give us solutions which we expect to exist. So these would be cosmological solutions. So after you've constructed a gravity model you can then use that model to explore the possible geometries or space-times that it produces. And one of the usual space-times we want to have would be a cosmological or de Sitter solution. So we first verified whether or not, well, we can be even more basic than cosmology, we can just ask, does it work with flat space-time or Minkowski space? And I should note that this is empty Minkowski space, or vacuum, there's no matter in this solution because we're being simple for now because we just just invented the model, we wanted to check it in the simplest case. So yes, Minkowski works, it's all fine. However, when we considered the de Sitter solution, so this would be an expanding, not only an expanding, but an accelerated expanding universe with a non-zero cosmological constant. Don't worry if you don't know what all that means, I'll explain in much more detail, but for now it's a cosmological solution. In fact, our universe at the moment is a de Sitter solution. So the Sitter universe with a positive non-zero cosmological constant we found unfortunately produces some really bad results that were not compatible. So we were essentially finding that the, the Sitter universe doesn't actually accelerate when we introduce these edge modes. So this was about two weeks before the end of the project. I verified that the de Sitter solution wouldn't accelerate. So it was a bit of a bit of a sad moment. We thought we had to abandon the theory really and my write-up would just be a well we tried and it didn't quite work out. But just through a stroke of good luck, good fortune, I decided one night to just go back and have a look at a few more things again and I went through and I found oh hold on this does look like it could potentially work if maybe we do a few extra things that I wasn't quite sure if I'd be allowed to do but my supervisor confirmed that they are okay. And so we made a few modifications and we were able to successfully show that yes, the De Sitter universe does work with edge modes and not only does it work, it accelerates and the edge modes have got rid of the problems that we have on the boundary. So that was a bit of a roller coaster ride. I thought the theory was broken and then two weeks before the end of the project I had to kind of scramble and get things working again. But it was a really great experience and I got to work on something kind of new and unsolved which was, uh, well I was really lucky to do that but I really enjoyed it. And so now hopefully in this video I'm going to explain in a lot more detail about all of these things. <laughs>